welcome back to my channel. This week's video is all about the positioning schema and is another video in my schemas playlist, which I'll link above now and it's in the description box below. In that playlist, there is lots of other videos about the different schemas and also the very first video is um, a good overview video if you're new to schemas about um, what they are and why they're important for us parents to understand. This video is all about the positioning schema and in this video, I'm gonna go over what the schema is and things you might observe your child doing if they're in the schema and activities and resources that you can provide for them to help them explore the schema even better. And then at the end of the video, I'll give you some um, language tips for words that you would want to introduce to your child as they're going through this schema. So the positioning schema is essentially about your child exploring the way things look and feel when they're positioned in different ways. As adults, you probably would like to, you like to move things around and um, your house is in a way that um, feels good to you or it might not be <laughs> and there's things that you want to change in your house that you don't like the flow of different rooms and that's all positioning schema we have as um, human beings um, uh, understanding of how objects look and feel in different ways and we have a preference to those things um, and children are just starting out in their little journeys of life and also are learning about how they can manipulate things and move them in different ways and how they look and act in a different way depending on where they're positioned so if you notice that your child is in a positioning schema you might notice that they are liking to be very orderly putting their toys in lines or in certain places. And this can be quite frustrating to parents. As with all schemas, there's often um, certain behaviors that um, parents um, become frustrated by because either they're time consuming for them or they just don't understand why their child is doing them. And for positioning schema, this might be one of those ones that manifests itself as frustrating for us adults because it might mean that your child um, spends a long time putting the items in certain arrangements or in certain places so they won't just um, leave their toys you know into a box they want to line them all up and they won't be happy until they're absolutely perfect and as adults we're busy and we want to rush them along and that's when frustrations can occur so just to be aware that if your child is um, doing that sort of behavior they're probably in this positioning schema just to give them that bit of time to do whatever it is that they're, they're having that natural inbuilt urge to do. Any kind of ordering activities are gonna come into play um, with this schema. Any kind of activity that involves stacking and sorting objects on um, a post, um, like this one we have here with um, uh, you know, the little pole and you, you need to thread the activities on. Any kind of threading activity um, or stacking activity is um, a lovely one to have out in your toy rotation if you feel that your child is in the positioning schema. Other things that they m might like to do is have their food laid out in certain ways. Again, this might be one of those frustrating things. If you've noticed that your child doesn't like their food all mixed together and they want everything separate, it, it might be that they're in their positioning schema. Again, go with it. It's a phase and it won't be for long. If your child um, likes to sit in a certain place or wants you to sit in a certain place, that might also be uh, a signal that they're in their positioning schema. Lots of the time a child will you know, kind of pat to make you sit where they want you to sit and that suggests that they're in a position or schema. Any kind of building activities are gonna be great. So building blocks and these kind of open-ended toys that involve um, building and manipulating things are also gonna be a good thing to have for the positioning schema. I would say if your child has siblings or um, other children that are gonna come into their space when they're in a positioning schema, um, be very aware that that's when um, fights break out, I wanna say, um, but frustrations can occur because if a child is in their positioning schema and they're trying to get everything just right, if a sibling comes through and knocks things over or moves things, you might notice that um, there is an explosion of a tantrum or um, uh, frustration at that point. So giving your child a safe space to create whatever it is, building or um, building blocks or whatever that is that they're trying to order or sort is, is really important as well if you notice that your child is in this schema. So things I would suggest that you have available to your child if they are in the positioning schema is a variety of objects and loose parts that they can order. It might be having blue and red things that they can order and sort um, into two little pots. It might be um, objects from smallest to largest. If you've got um, one of those little Russian dolls, that's great for positioning because you've got to get the right object 
the right sized object inside the right sized object to make the whole thing fit together. Some of the Montessori puzzles are really um, great for the positioning schema as well. We have a puzzle that has three um, um, circles of varying sizes, so that's really good for the positioning schema for them to understand which slot the um, circle goes in. They're all circles, but they're all different sizes. So it's that self-correcting puzzle that's really great. So words that you'd like, you probably want to introduce when you've noticed that your child is in the positioning schema is things like sort and order. So when they're doing that, you know, talking to them, oh, you've sorted these objects, or you've ordered them from smallest to largest, getting them to know that language. Also things like on, next to, underneath, near, all of those positional languages, uh, language is really going to be important as well so that you can help your child to explain where they've put things. Smaller, larger is also obviously going to come into play and also things like stack and build. Um, anything that you can verbalise what they're doing is going to help them um, acquire language better. So anyway, I hope that has given you um, a better overview of the positioning schema and has helped you to understand um, what your child is going through and go and check out the other videos in this playlist and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>